Hi, doctor. I have this anterior open bite case ready to discuss. Um, you can see that um, the teeth that are grayed out, those are the teeth that are not moving in the case. Um, so based on where she's initially biting and her photos, there doesn't look to be a need to actively move the second premolars. Um, she has a sufficiently wide arch through the molars um, and increasing the width of the premolars is unlikely to reduce the amount of IPR needed here um, because the IPR isn't planned at so much for needing uh, to create more space. It's meant to help reduce the flare. So um, her teeth have a vertical and a horizontal anterior open bite. So we can help the vertical aspect with the optimized extrusion attachments. And the thing about anterior open bite cases is they do require a lot of attachments. The great news is that these type of movements have very little resistance of the bone, so these movements tend to happen and work very quickly. We also need to have retention attachments, and these are called retention attachments, not anchorage attachments, because they are meant for the aligner to be engaged and retained on the arch. So when we are attempting to do this extrusion movement, although we have the active engagement of the aligner on these optimized attachments, um, what can happen is if the um, teeth are resisting, not because necessarily amount of bone pressure, but there's a PDL, there's multiple teeth moving, without these retention attachments, that then the aligner starts to slip off or disengage with the teeth, and then these anterior attachments become essentially useless. So maintaining premolar retention or molar if you need to attachments is really key. Now the vertical aspect is solved with the extrusion attachments. Um, and if we were to then solve the reduce the flare, we do need to do IPR. So if teeth were all lane, lined up in a straight line, we could take these anterior teeth that are tipped buckly, the incisal edges are tipped buckly, and we could tilt all those back um, and not need to do IPR, but we are in an arch. And so when we take teeth and try tip the incisal edges back, we're essentially reducing the size of the semicircle that we're working with. And so therefore IPR is needed to help reduce in the the buckle flaring of these teeth. So you could these movements are all happening at the same time for the most efficient movements. The lower arch in her case uh, looks like these teeth are in a better arch form than the upper. Therefore, there's a minimal extrusion needed. So we only have the extrusion attachment on this single lateral incisor, but still we wanna make sure that all the movements on the lower anterior are happening most predictably by still maintaining these retention attachments. And then as far as bite goes, you can see that this is finishing with a heavy anterior contact. Now this is theoretical um, because this part of the ClinCheck is really just a tool to help give a guide of where these teeth may connect with each other. And if we're starting with an anterior open bite, I would rather um, on the ClinCheck over over treat that because even though this is a very predictable movement with the correct attachment, uh, when we're trying to get, say for example, 1.3 or 1.2 millimeters of extrusion, we might fall a little bit short of the goal simply because the aligners are not fully fused to the teeth. So if we only get 0.9 millimeters or one millimeter of extrusion, then we're still gonna be really improved but still not quite have any anterior contact still improved, but what I'd rather do is plan for 1.3, have that be a heavy anterior contact. Therefore, if it falls a little bit short clinically, she's gonna have some light or very, very close to light contact that would then uh, reduce the uh, need or risk of doing additional aligners to finish out that movement. And then of course, no bite ramps because patient wouldn't be able to bite on them anyway. Let me know if you have any questions.